My name is Steve Pesman, and um, I've been publishing a surf magazine since 1970. For the first 20 years it was Surfer Magazine, and for the last 23 years it's been the Surfer's Journal. From that perch I've been watching surfing um, intently uh, for over, coming up on 50 years. San Onofrio was first surfed in 1934 by a crew from Corona del Mar when they were displaced by the extension of the entrance jetties there, which wrecked the wave. So they went cruising down south, they'd heard about a break, and they went there and surfed it, and lo and behold, it was everything they'd hoped for. Multiple breaks, there was a grass shack on the beach that Hollywood Production Company left abandoned from a movie they were making there. So they moved right in with their jugs of wine, their guitars, their girlfriends, and surfed all the breaks and started coming back and within a year or two that place was attracting surfers from all over the coast because it was everything they wanted. It was remote and gorgeous, the waves were compatible, consistent, um, it was just a, a surfer's paradise. Back in the 30s the surfboards were cumbersome and heavy and the soft waves of San Onofre were well suited for that and as the, as the surfboards evolved using aircraft technology post-war 40s and on 50s as the boards became more maneuverable, the uh, waves immediately to the north, including church, lower trestles, and upper trestles, uh, came into play because they had been too acute for the uh, slower, heavier boards. But as boards improved, those waves came into play. Nearby, a lot of the surf industry has evolved as well. The publications, the foam core business, the surfboard business, the clothing business, all of those were spin-offs of the lifestyle that surfing created and a lot of the principles in that surf industry located close to trestles for the surf, for the unique resource that it provided. And so you see San Clemente and Beach Road and many people within short distance, living within short distance, setting up their businesses and their lifestyles within short distance of the San Nofri Trestles complex so as to be able to make use of it. Some of the significant uh, historical surfing figures that um, have centered their lives to be close to San Onofre and Trestles, Walter Hoffman and Flippy Hoffman of Hoffman Fabrics that manufactured and sold all the fabric to Ocean Pacific and Hang Tan and Lightning Bolt and Quicksilver in the early years and created that whole uh, um, clothing movement. Uh, Hobie Alter, who was uh, the Henry Ford of production line surfboard manufacturing. Gordon Clark, who developed Clark Foam, which manufactures or manufactured the, uh, the foam cores for surfboards and monopolized that business for many years through better service and better product. Around the world, he served the surfing world and lived on Beach Road to be close and lived in Cypress Shore at Cotton's Point to be close to Trestles. James Arness bought a home at Cypress Shore to be close to Trestles. Bruce Brown and John Severson, who Bruce Brown made The Endless Summer, John Severson published Surfer Magazine and created surf films, they were living close by there. They were called the, even called, tagged the Dana Point Mafia because they um, were such a powerful element in the development of surfing. And that was, they were called that by uh, surfers from other areas, Malibu and other areas. They're kind of jealous of the, um, the uh, kind of the monopoly they seem to have on aspects of, of the business of surfing. There's a clump of bamboo on the beach at San Onofre that surfer beach guy musicians meet at every Wednesday night throughout the summer and play music and it's called the Bamboo Room. They've cut a CD. That's been going on for 40 years. The members, the musicians in the group have changed. It died away. New ones have come in. Some of them are professional. Some are just playing for fun. Everyone's accepted. That's an example of the culture there. Vehicles have been customized to camp there. Beach tables and cooking uh, have been uh, originated, you know, like fold out beach tables with four seats. A San Onofre cookbook has been published of recipes that families, their favorite beach food recipes. There's been yearbooks for San Onofre published over, over the period of time that, that represent the history of the place. People from all over the world that surf come there and say, wow, this is a really a special place. It's, it's unique in that you can park at the beach. Just the whole range, the whole charisma is, is unique and represents uh, the lifestyle. In some ways, unfortunately, turned into a multi-billion dollar industry because it has so much 
it's so attractive and so charismatic. And surfing is one of the most wonderful, rewarding activities you can do. So the trestles, um, you know, there's a lot of great surf spots along the California coast. Huntington Pier, uh, Malibu, uh, Wind and Sea, Santa Cruz. Uh, all of them have significance to the sport, but none of them in none of those areas have the combination of elements and historical contributions um, that, that Trestles Complex has uh, offered us uh, for the last, um, I don't know, 30, 70, probably almost 80 years now. So it's a very special place and it deserves that designation very much.